Hi, my name is Scott Simpson, and this is a cardiomediocentral anatomy on chest x-ray and CT. The goal of this lecture is to provide an overview of major cardiovascular anatomy on both a normal contrast enhanced chest CT as well as chest radiography. At the end of this session, you should be able to identify the following major structures on CT, identify the outlined cardiomediocentral contours on chest x-ray, correlate those contours on chest x-ray with normal CT anatomy, and then describe key anatomical relationships outlined in this lecture. We'll be covering both vascular and cardiac anatomy. In the structure of this lecture, we will review all the anatomical structures with diagrams, <clears throat> some from the dissector. And then in addition, we'll also be looking at the gross anatomy on chest x-rays to help us map where these structures are located. Not all of the structures are gonna be visible by chest x-ray, but knowing where they're actually located is critical. So we'll try to also outline all the contours that they create, which are visible by chest x-ray. We'll then use CT to demonstrate key anatomical relationships in greater detail, and those key relationships will actually be outlined at the bottom of each of the CT images. Four CT levels are chosen, the upper chest, aortic arch, mid chest, and lower chest, and those are the only CT levels we'll be looking at. All key anatomical relationships that you're responsible for, for knowing are summarized in the appendix at the end of this lecture, as well as the key radiological images, as well as the practice, practice cases. So this is where we're going. So this is the frontal chest radiograph. And these are all the contours that we're going to be covering in this lecture. And then we're going to be looking at four CT levels, the upper chest, which you can see here, the aortic arch level, which is here, the mid chest, and then the lower chest. So just four CT levels and their relative locations on chest radiography. So let's first start talking about the thoracic aorta. The thoracic aorta is the largest artery in the human body and is the primary mover of oxygenated blood throughout the body. It starts at the level of the aortic valve, which is in the mid chest, and then ends within the um, uh, diaphragmatic hiatus where it passes into the abdomen. There's three major sections of the aorta, the aortic root, aortic arch, and descending aorta. The aortic root and ascending aorta will be combined uh, for the purposes of this talk. So let's first start with the ascending aorta. The ascending aorta starts at the level of the aortic valve and will end at the level of the first aortic arch artery. So this is the location of the ascending aorta, and we're going to see that it's anteriorly located, or relatively anteriorly located in the mediastinum, and slightly to the right of midline. The aortic arch starts at the first arch vessel, and then ends at the last arch vessel, and we can see that it has a course which runs from anterior to posterior. The three aortic arch vessels that you need to know are the brachiocephalic artery, also known as the anonymous artery, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian, and you have to know this order from right to left. The descending thoracic aorta starts after the last arch vessel, which is typically the left subclavian artery, and ends at the diaphragmatic uh, hiatus, and is located to the left of midline and posteriorly adjacent to the spine. And we can see it back here. So now let's talk about where the aorta is on a frontal chest radiograph. First, to orient ourselves, remember on a ch frontal chest radiograph, right is actually to the left side of the image and left is to the right side of the image, so right and left. Up in the neck is superior and in, um, down in the abdomen is inferior. The ascending aorta is going to be located within the mid chest and it's going to start at the level of the aortic valve, which is located in the middle of the heart. So this is the location of the aortic valve. The ascending aorta, we can see its approximate location here. It's going to be located slightly to the right of midline, and notice how it could potentially create a small contour in the outer edge of the mediastinum just above the heart. The location of the ascending aorta that we're going to see is going to be anteriorly located on the lateral view. And so we can see the location of the ascending aorta here, which is a relatively anteriorly located structure in the mid chest just above the heart, which is this larger structure just below it. After the aortic arch, the next portion that we're going to talk about is the, uh, sorry, after the ascending aorta, the next portion that we're going to talk about is the aortic arch. And remember, the aortic arch runs anterior to posterior, and since we're looking at it anterior to posterior, it's going to appear as a circular, as if you're looking down a tube. Therefore, it appears circular because we're looking straight into it. This is going to give rise to the three arch vessels, which are located in the upper chest. So you can see here's the upper chest around the level of the clavicles. On the lateral view, the aortic arch is going to be running from anterior to posterior. Here again is the ascending aorta. Coming off the ascending aorta, running anterior to posterior, kind of horizontally here, is the aortic arch. And we can see the three aortic arch vessels coming off the top of it. 
After the aortic arch, the next portion of the, the aorta that we're going to see is the descending thoracic aorta. Remember, the descending thoracic aorta is going to be to the left of the spine, whereas the ascending aorta was to the right of the spine out here. We can see the spine outlined by these rectangular shaped structures. And it's going to terminate at the level of the diaphragm. On the lateral view, we expect the descending thoracic aorta to be posteriorly located, which we'd see again adjacent to the spine, the spine being posterior and the sternum being anterior. So let's try to visualize the location of the aorta. Remember, it begins kind of in the mid heart where the aortic valve is located, will come up to the right, crosses over to the left aortic arch and descends down. And so this is the approximate location of the aorta and the arch vessels coming off on the frontal view. And this is its location, again, on the lateral view, starting anteriorly for the ascending aorta, going from anterior to posterior for the aortic arch, and then descending posteriorly adjacent to the spine on the left side of the body. So if we were a blood cell, again, we could see the passage of blood from the ascending aorta to descending aorta. And then the same thing on the lateral view, starting anteriorly, going up and then back down the descending thoracic aorta. So these, now the question becomes, which portions of the aorta can we actually see radiographically? And these are defined by its contours that it creates by interfacing with the lung. So what are these contours? So the first contour that we can see just above the heart, we're going to learn this to be the ascending aorta. The next contour that we see is this uh, circular shaped contour out here. Again, that's going to be the aortic arch. And then after the aortic arch adjacent to the spine, we can vaguely make out this line back here. This is the descending thoracic aorta. And again, this is a posterior structure. The ascending is an anterior structure. On the lateral view, these are going to be fairly hard to see. Really, the only line that we could see on the lateral view is this portion back here. And again, that's really going to represent the aortic arch and proximal portions of the descending thoracic aorta. So now let's take a look at the four axial CT image locations that we're going to be studying. The first is going to be in the upper chest, which is around the level of the clavicles. Here we're going to expect to see the arch vessels. The next level we're going to look at is at the level of the aortic arch. We're going to expect to see the aortic arch. Finally, in the mid chest, just above the heart. So you see we're just above the heart here. And then lastly, in the lower chest, where we expect to see the heart. So let's start with the upper chest. So first, we have to know our orientation. So for all CTs, you'll see that these labels will be placed on them to help orient you. Just like radiographs, the left of the image is the patient's right, and the right of the image is the patient's left. So left and right, just like a chest radiograph, up is anterior, um, down is posterior. Some landmarks here is the sternum, which is anterior, and the spine, which is posterior. So the first thing that we expect to see at this level in the upper chest are the arch vessels, which, is, which we could see outlined here on the chest that try. This is the approximate location. We're just below the level of the clavicles within the upper chest. And so where are these arch vessels going to be located? They're going to be located in the mediastinum, which is this area in here. And so we're going to blow this area up. And then some important landmarks that we're going to see that are air filled is in the midline here is the trachea. And just behind the trachea and near the spine is going to be the esophagus. We're going to see the esophagus throughout its course um, on all CT images. The trachea will end just above the mid chest. Just in front of the trachea, we're going to see these three circular structures. They appear circular because they are tubular on these um, coronal, uh, a coronal plane of the chest. So you can see they're up and down here. And therefore, when we take a section through them, they're going to appear as circles on these axial images. And these are the three arch vessels, the first being the brachiocephalic, the second, the left common carotid, and then the last is the left subclavian. You have to know this order from right to left, so you have to know the order. And its key relationship is the fact that these vessels are located anteriorly into the left of the trachea within the upper chest. This is how you know you're located in the upper chest is when you see these three arch vessels. Now we're going to come down a little bit further. So notice we're below the arch vessels, and the arch vessels come off the aortic arch. And that's going to be the next structure that we're going to see. So we're at the level of the aortic arch. And the aortic arch runs anterior to posterior, which we could see here. So because it runs anterior to posterior, it's going to appear more tubular on CT than the circular arch vessels that we saw, which run up and down. So here's the location of the aortic arch, which are going to give rise to those three arch vessels we saw just superiorly. Notice the location of the aortic arch, which is going to be to the left of midline. So here's midline. This is the spine. It's going to be to the left of midline. And just to the left 
of the trachea and the esophagus. Remember the arch vessels were anterior and to the left of the trachea. The aortic arch is straight to the left of the trachea, just a little bit lower. So here we're seeing the aortic arch. And then again, we could kind of correspond why this looks like this, this kind of anterior to posterior shape. When we look at the lateral chest x-ray view, where again, we could see that anterior to posterior course of the aortic arch. Coming down further now, we can see that we're past the aortic arch, past the aortic arch vessels, and we're now located within the mid chest. So the third of our fourth image. And we can see that the aorta now is gonna appear in two portions. There's gonna be the anterior portion here and the posterior portion here. The anterior portion, remember, is gonna be located in the relative anterior portions of the mediastinum. So we can see here's the ascending aorta. And again, it's gonna appear circular because it's running up and down. So the key relationship here is the ascending aorta is anteriorly located and then slightly to the right of midline. Here it appears relatively midline, but you can see on chest x-rays, if we're down a little bit lower, it actually will appear slightly to the right of midline. And we need to compare and contrast that to the descending thoracic aorta. The descending thoracic aorta, again, is gonna appear circular because it's running up and down, which we'd see back here. And notice its relative location to the ascending. It's posteriorly located in the posterior aspects of the mediastinum, adjacent to the spine, which we could see back here. And notice this location is clearly to the left of midline. So the ascending aorta slightly to the right of midline, anterior, descending aorta posterior into the left of midline. We can see here why we see both portions of the ascending and thora uh, descending thoracic aorta when we look at the lateral chest radiograph. And we can see that as we section through this axial plane, again, notice the ascending aorta anteriorly and the descending aorta posteriorly near the thoracic spine. And again, we're above the level of the aortic, uh, above the level of the heart. So in the mid chest, we expect to see both the ascending and descending aorta. In the upper chest, we expect to see the aortic arch and arch vessels. Coming down further, now we're at the level of the lower chest. And here we could see, for the most part, just the heart. Notice how we've lost the ascending aorta, and that's because it's already come off of the left ventricle, which we'll talk about in the upcoming slides. However, we could still see the descending thoracic aorta, which is located posteriorly. And again, note that it's located to the left of midline and near the spine and the posterior aspects of the chest. So therefore, in the lower chest, the only portion of the aorta that we're gonna see is the descending thoracic aorta. So in summary, we saw that there's three arch vessels that, that arise from the aortic arch in the upper chest. We can see them here on the chest x-ray around the level of the clavicles, and they run up and down and therefore will appear as circles on the CT anterior and to the left of the trachea, which is this air-filled black structure just behind them. You have to know the order, brachiocephalic, left subclavian, and left common carotid. The aortic arch appeared as a tubular structure which ran from anterior to posterior, also within the upper chest. And we saw this on CT. Here's the relative axial CT level. The ascending and descending thoracic aorta we saw in the mid chest. And notice that the ascending aorta is anteriorly located and the descending aorta is posteriorly located adjacent to the spine and to the left of midline. And then remember that in the lower chest, the descending thoracic aorta is the only portion of the aorta that we see. And again, it's gonna be located posteriorly and to the left of midline. On a frontal chest x-ray, we could see portions of the ascending aorta. So notice we can't see all of the outlines of the ascending aorta. However, we were able to see the ascending aorta, portions of the aortic arch, and then also the descending thoracic aorta. Let's now move on to the mediastinal and venous anatomy. So the mediastinal and venous anatomy that we're gonna be talking about are the brachiocephalic veins, which are left and right, and the superior vena cava. The brachiocephalic veins, like the aortic arch vessels, are located in the upper chest, and they're responsible for delivering deoxygenated blood from the head and arms. On this diagram here from your dissector, we can see the relative location of the brachiocephalic vessels, which are located within the upper chest. So you can see this is the um, thyroid gland up here for the lower neck. The brachiocephalic vessels are located here. And again, we can see the direction of blood flow coming in from the head and neck arms centrally. Now, a couple of things to note that we're gonna see on CT is that the left brachiocephalic vein has a much more horizontal course and therefore will appear a slightly more tubular on CT. And we can see its relative location here. The right brachiocephalic vein is much more vertically oriented and therefore is more likely to appear circular. In addition, the left brachiocephalic vein is gonna cross anterior or in front 
of the arch vessels, which we could see just behind it on the diagram. So that's going to be an important anatomical relationship that we have to look at on CT. Both of these brachiocephalic veins are eventually going to form the SVC. And notice the left brachiocephalic vein is crossing from left to right to meet up with the right brachiocephalic vein to form the SVC, which we're going to see on the right side of the body. And notice that this occurs at the level of the aortic arch. So again, also within the upper chest. So here's a picture from your dissector. And this is a diagram of an axial image within the upper chest. So again, here we could see the three aortic arch arteries, just anterior and to the left of the trachea and the esophagus, which we saw earlier. But also note on this diagram that we can see the left brachiocephalic vein as it begins to cross towards midline to meet up with the right brachiocephalic vein. And notice the location of the left brachiocephalic vein, it's going to be sandwiched between the three arch vessels and the sternum. The superior vena cava is the largest, one of the two largest veins in the body, and it forms from the confluence of the right and left brachiocephalic veins on the right side of the body at the brachiocephalic venous confluence, where the two veins coalesce. And we can see the location of the SVC here, beginning within the upper chest and running all the way down to the lower chest to enter the heart. And we can see that the SVC will eventually drain into the right atrium. So again, the key location here is that it's going to be running kind of in the mid chest, above the heart and below the brachiocephalic vein confluence. So what about on chest x-ray? Where, where, where do we expect to see these structures? So remember, the brachiocephalic veins are going to be located in the upper chest by the clavicles and arch vessels. The left brachiocephalic vein is going to be more horizontal as it comes from left to right and crossing midline, whereas the right brachiocephalic vein is going to be more vertical, running up and down on the right side of the body, which is the key, which is the key feature here. These two veins then are going to form the SVC, which runs vertically kind of in the mid chest on the right side of the body. So this is the location of the SVC. The SVC will eventually terminate within the right atrium where it delivers all the deoxygenated blood. And we're going to learn that this is the right atrium down here. So now some key features that we're going to see on CT, and we also saw on the diagram, is the relative location of the brachiocephalic vein with the three arch vessels. And we learned that the three arch vessels came off the aortic arch around the level of the clavicles. And we're going to see that the left brachiocephalic vein is going to cross in front of them. In addition, we learned that the um, aortic arch marks the level at which the two brachiocephalic veins come together. And we can see how this corresponds to what we're seeing radiographically. And then lastly, the SVC is going to be on the right side of the body. And therefore, it's going to parallel the course of the ascending aorta. So notice how the ascending aorta kind of overlaps here with the SVC. So now we have to talk about what visible contours we could see by chest x-ray. Again, we talked about all these relative locations. The key thing to really realize here is that the brachiocephalic veins are not seen by chest x-ray. And this is usually because the um, aorta eclipses them. And we could see that the SVC relative location is here, right? But when we drop the aorta in, we could see just how much the SVC is eclipsed by that ascending aorta. Now, what's really important is to identify uh, the location of these structures because oftentimes we need to know where central lines are being placed. So what is a central line? A central line is a catheter that's placed within the chest to usually deliver some sort of medication or for dialysis. No one is gonna ask you what this line is, what it's used for, or even to identify it. We don't expect you to be able to identify these lines. However, if I was to draw the line in, you should have some idea as to where this line was actually located. So we have to try to figure out where is this line going. So this line we could see is entering the internal jugular vein. It's crossing midline via the left brachiocephalic vein. And notice how it terminates on the right side of the body within the SVC. The fact that it's terminating on the right side of the body tells you that it has to be a venous placed line. And then eventually we could see how it could deliver um, medications within to the right atrium. So again, you're not responsible for identifying these lines. I'm not going to ask you to identify the line or ask what the line is. But if the line is drawn, you should have some idea as to where that line is terminating. And if it's on the right side of the body, it has to be entering the SVC. So what about on CT now? What do these structures look like? So we're going to be looking at the same four axial CT levels. And we're going to be starting again in the upper chest at the level just below the clavicles. So again, we can identify that we're in the upper chest because we already know what these three circles are, anterior to the left of the trachea. These are the arch vessels. 
Just in front of the arch vessels, we expect to see the brachiocephalic veins. And indeed, we can see the left brachiocephalic vein crossing from left to right to eventually meet up with the right brachiocephalic vein. Notice the left brachiocephalic vein appears somewhat tubular, and that's because it's running across the chest, whereas the right brachiocephalic vein is more circular, and that's because of its vertical orientation. And we could see that on the schematic here with the relative location of the right and left brachiocephalic veins, again, in front of those arch vessels. And then here's the sternum, which sandwiches the arch vessels between the sternum and, sorry, it sandwiches the left brachiocephalic vein between the sternum and the arch vessels. So the key relationship that you need to know is the left brachiocephalic vein runs just behind the sternum and in front of the three aortic arch vessels. Blowing this area up, you can see just how nicely this corresponds to the um, diagram that we looked at earlier. We could again see the three aortic arch vessels, the trachea and the esophagus. In front of the arch vessels, the left brachiocephalic vein. And to the right of midline, so just to the right of midline here, to the right of the trachea, we could see the right brachiocephalic vein. Again, this is a key image here and one relationship that you should understand. Now, coming down further, the brachiocephalic veins are going to come together, remember, on the right side of the body to form the SVC. And they do this at the level of the aortic arch, which we've already talked about, and that forms this bump here on the chest x-ray and notice our location. So this reflects actually the confluence of the brachiocephalic veins. We're seeing a portion of the left brachiocephalic vein as it comes together with the right brachiocephalic vein to form the SVC within the upper chest. So the key relationship here is that the brachiocephalic veins come together on the right of the midline at the level of the aortic arch to form the SVC. And again, look at the relative locations of the trachea, which sits again in the middle of the chest. Now coming down further, we're at the level of the mid-chest. And what do we expect to see in the mid-chest? Remember, we expect to see two circles, the anterior being the ascending and the posterior being the descending. Now, what runs parallel to the ascending aorta, remember to the right of midline, this now is going to be the SVC. So the brachiocephalic veins have come together to form the SVC, which runs up and down, which is why it appears as a circle just to the right of midline and also to the right of the ascending aorta. The key relationship here is that the SVC is to the right of midline and parallels the right edge of the ascending aorta. Coming down further into the lower chest, we don't expect to see the SVC anymore because it's, it's emptied with into the right atrium. The only thing that we do see that we've talked about so far is the descending aorta, which is posterior into the left of midline. So in summary, the brachiocephalic veins are located within the upper chest. So just below the level of the arch vessels. And we can see with this green line, the location of the brachiocephalic veins in front of the arch vessels and then behind the sternum. The left brachiocephalic vein crosses in front of the arch vessels to join the right brachiocephalic vein at the level of the aortic arch. So here's the level of the aortic arch, and we can see that they cross midline to form the SVC, which is here. The SVC, again, is going to be right-sided, so this is the location of where we saw the SVC in the mid-chest, to the right of midline and to the right of the ascending aorta. On chest x-ray, they're not well seen. Remember, we didn't see really much of a contour with the exception of the SVC, which we could see here. But a lot of times the SVC is eclipsed by the ascending aorta, so we don't really see it all that well by chest x-ray. So now let's move on to the pulmonary arteries. There's three pulmonary arteries that we're gonna be talking about, the main, right, and left pulmonary arteries. The main pulmonary artery delivers deoxygenated blood to the lungs via the, from the right ventricle across the pulmonary valve. Here's a schematic from your dissector. This is a coronal appearance, right and left side of the body. And this structure right here reflects the main pulmonary artery dividing into the right and left pulmonary arteries. Here's a relative location of the right ventricle in which blood is leaving to enter into the pulmonary arteries. The main pulmonary artery is again gonna be located in the mid chest. Remember the other structures we saw in the mid chest were the SVC ascending and descending thoracic aorta. On the schematic, you can see that it's located below the aortic arch, which we could see here. And then importantly, it's also below the trachea and the carina level. So we don't expect to see the trachea at the level of the main pulmonary artery. Remember the trachea we only saw on two images within the upper chest at the level of the aortic arch and at the level of the brachiocephalic arteries and the brachiocephalic veins.
And then the last thing to know is that on the schematic, you can see that the main pulmonary artery is to the left of midline and to the left of the ascending aorta. Remember, to the right of the ascending aorta was the SVC. To the left of the ascending aorta, we're going to see the main pulmonary artery. The main pulmonary artery has an, has an anterior, slightly anterior to posterior course, but before, before dividing into the right and left pulmonary arteries. And because it's running slightly into the plane of imaging, it's going to appear somewhat tubular on the CT. And we can see just the location of the main pulmonary artery, again, below the level of the crina. So we don't expect to see the trachea at the level of the main pulmonary artery. Now, what's interesting is that the pulmonary arteries have different courses with respects to the, to the main stem bronchi on both sides. The right pulmonary artery you can see here has a course that remains below the right main stem bronchus, which is located here. The left pulmonary artery, on the other hand, goes up and over and eventually behind the left main stem bronchus, which we could see here. As a result, the left pulmonary artery is higher in location than the right pulmonary artery. We could also see this in some schematics that were shared in your dissector. So on this sagittal view of the lung, so here's anterior, here's posterior, notice how the right pulmonary arteries sit below the main stem airways. So it's a key anatomical relationship. The airways are above the pulmonary arteries, so the pulmonary arteries are below the airways. On the left side, again, here's anterior and here's posterior, notice how the pulmonary artery in this section is going up and over the airways. Again, another key, another key relationship to know. So now where do we expect to see the pulmonary arteries? Again, remember, we expect to see them in the mid chest below the crina. So here's your trachea, here's the crina, and again, we expect to see the main pulmonary artery in the mid chest to the left of midline. So here's the location of the main pulmonary artery. Remember, the main pulmonary artery is going to be located below the crina. So this air-filled dark structure in the midline, this reflects the trachea. And we can see the location of the pulmonary artery below the level of the crina. And therefore, we don't expect to see the trachea at the same level. Notice also that the uh, main pulmonary artery is located below the level of the aortic arch. Remember the circular structure that we saw here, that reflects the aortic arch. And so we don't expect to see the pulmonary artery at the level of the aortic arch. And then lastly, it's to the left of the ascending aorta. So here's the ascending aorta that we already saw creating this contour out here. And notice how the main pulmonary artery is located to the left of it. Now, the main pulmonary artery, we can see some portions of it by chest x-ray. These are kind of hard to see. So if outlined, you should be able to recognize them. So again, we expect to see the main pulmonary artery creating a little small contour right in here. We'll subtract this off. And notice that that contour is just below the contour of the aortic arch. So here's the aortic arch. And over here is the ascending aorta, which we've already learned about. Now, what about the right and left pulmonary arteries? So the right pulmonary artery has a somewhat horizontal location. So you can see its course going from left to right, somewhat horizontal. And notice its location with respect to the right main stem airway, which is seen in here. Notice it's below the right main stem airway. The left pulmonary artery is actually higher in position because it's going up and over the left main stem airway. So if blowing this area up and taking another look at it again, this black air-filled structure, these reflect the airways. And so for the airways, we see the trachea, right main stem, and left main stem. And then this bump that's right here, that reflects the main pulmonary artery. And then the right pulmonary artery, we again see sitting below the right main stem, and then the left pulmonary artery going up and over the left main stem. And then lastly, we can see its relative location to the aortic arch, which is just above it. Now, it's important to know that this relationship is not well seen by chest x-ray unless a line is placed into it. This line that we see on this chest x-ray reflects a Swan-Gans catheter. You do not need to know the Swan-Gans catheter, and you will not have to identify a line. However, if the line is outlined, like it is in this case in orange, you should be able to identify where this line is going. So it's going from the left internal jugular vein into the left brachiocephalic, into the SVC, into the right atrium, right ventricle, main pulmonary artery, and notice this horizontal portion right here, that reflects the right pulmonary artery. And we can see that the right pulmonary artery, which is in this area right here, is below the expected location of the right main stem airway. Similarly, on the left-hand side, we have a, a Swan-Gans catheter, again placed internal jugular vein, right brachiocephalic vein, 
SVC, right atrium, right ventricle, main pulmonary artery. And notice the shape here. It almost looks like it's looping on itself, but that's not the case. This is actually the left pulmonary artery going up and over the left main stem airway. So what about on CT? Where do we expect to see the main pulmonary arteries? Do we expect to see them in the upper chest where we see the arch vessels and the brachiocephalic veins? And the answer is no. Remember, on the upper chest, all we saw so far were the brachiocephalic veins and the arch arteries, again, anterior to the trachea and esophagus. What about the level of the aortic arch where we saw the brachiocephalic venous confluence and the aortic arch, which is the left of midline running next to the trachea? Do we expect to see the pulmonary arteries here? And the answer is no. Remember on the chest x-ray, the arch artery, the uh, main pulmonary artery bump is just below the main, the aortic arch bump, which is around here. So it's not until we get to the mid chest that we expect to see the main pulmonary artery. And how do we know that we're in the mid chest? We look for all those circles that we've already talked about. We can see the ascending aorta and descending aorta, ascending being anterior, descending being posterior to the left of midline. Paralleling the ascending aorta, we see the SVC. And then to the left of the ascending aorta, remember to the left side of the body is gonna be the pulmonary artery. We can see the main pulmonary artery and note it's funny um, shape. And that's because it has a somewhat tubular course running from anterior to posterior here. Again, you don't have to know all those details. You just have to be able to identify them on CT. And so this bump right here, just below the aortic arch uh, to the left of the ascending aorta is the main pulmonary artery. So the key relationship is that the main pulmonary artery is to the left of midline to the left of the ascending aorta and located only in the mid chest. Now we also could see the right pulmonary artery and notice the horizontal course of the right pulmonary artery. It's going from the left side of the body to the right and it's very horizontal coming off the main pulmonary artery. And the key relationship here is that it's located below the right main stem airway, which is not shown on the CT, but it's also located just behind the SVC, right? So here's the SVC and here's the right pulmonary artery. The left pulmonary artery goes up and over the left main stem bronchus. So here's your left pulmonary artery and notice how we are seeing a small portion of the left main stem bronchus. And notice how the artery is going up and over and behind that left main stem bronchus, which is why the left pulmonary artery is located more superiorly on chest x-ray. And then again, we don't expect to see the pulmonary arteries within the lower chest because they come off the right ventricle. And in the lower chest, all we see is the heart. And we also learn about the descending aorta. So in summary, the pulmonary arteries are only located in the mid chest, which is below the crina and below the aortic arch and above the heart. The main pulmonary artery is to the left of midline. Remember to the left of midline and to the left of the ascending aorta. The right pulmonary artery is below the right main stem bronchus, so below the right main stem bronchus, and the left pulmonary artery goes up and over, goes up and over the left main stem airway. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the heart. So the heart has four chambers and four valves. On the right, we expect to see the right atrium and right ventricle. The right heart's going to be internally located. The right atrium is going to be separated from the right ventricle via the tricuspid valve. Blood leaves the right ventricle via the pulmonary valve. On the left, we have the left atrium and left ventricle, which is going to be posterior to the right heart. The left atrium is separated by the left ventricle by the mitral valve, and then blood leaves the left ventricle by the aortic valve. Remember, we talked about that. That was located in the middle of the chest where the ascending aorta started. And then we have two septa separating the atria and ventricles. The interatrial septum separates the right atrium and left atrium. The interventricular septum separates the right and left ventricles. So let's first talk about where the relative location of the heart is. So here's the heart. It's this big round oval structure within the lower chest. And notice that it's only located in the lower half of the chest. So let's first talk about the blood flow. So we're gonna follow blood through the heart and the first chamber that it's gonna hit is the right atrium. And so where's the right atrium? The right atrium is gonna be on the right side of the body and notice it's the most right lateral chamber within the heart. And on the lateral view, it's approximately located within the mid portions of the heart. Importantly, the right, uh, right atrium forms the right cardiac contour on the frontal chest x-ray. And we can see here's the right contour, the right cardiac contour, which is formed by the right atrium. And we already learned about some additional contours here. Just above the right atrium, remember, is the ascending aorta. And then to the left, we have the arch. And below the arch, the main pulmonary artery. On the lateral view, it's the only chamber 
that's non-contour forming. That's an important point to know. So notice when we take this away, none of it is interfacing with lung to create a cardiac contour. Blood then leaves the right atrium across the tricuspid valve and then enters the right ventricle. The right ventricle is the most anterior chamber within the heart. The, the right heart is always going to be anterior to the left heart, and the right ventricle is the most anterior chamber. Notice on the frontal view, it's not contour forming. It actually doesn't create an interface with the lung. On the lateral view, however, it is very anteriorly located, which we could see here. Again, it's the most anteriorly located chamber in the heart. So it does create a reflection back here, which reflects the anterior boundary of the right ventricle. Blood then leaves the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve to circulate blood into the lungs. Blood then returns to the lung, to the heart via the pulmonary veins to enter the left atrium. The left atrium and the left heart in general are, is posteriorly located. The left atrium is the most superior and posteriorly located chamber within the heart. And we can see that here. So on the frontal view, it's hard to know if it's anterior or posterior, but on the lateral view, notice it's very posteriorly located. It's also the most superiorly located chamber in the heart. On the frontal view, it's largely non-contour forming. Over here was the right atrium, but there is a small portion of the left atrium that creates a contour. And it's this portion out here. This is what's known as the left atrial appendage. The left atrial appendage creates a contour just below the pulmonary artery. So we're beginning to kind of outline all of the contours. On the right, we had the right atrium, ascending aorta, arch, main pulmonary artery. And just below the main pulmonary artery, we have the left atrium. On the lateral view, we expect to see it form the most posterior and superior boundary of the heart. And so here's, again, all the heart. Here is the left atrial contour. It's very posteriorly and superiorly located. And again, the right ventricle was the most anterior contour within the heart. Blood then leaves the left atrium via the mitral valve to enter into the left ventricle. The left ventricle is the largest chamber in the heart and really forms the majority of the left cardiac contour. So notice on this frontal view, it occupies a large portion of the heart contour just below the level of the left atrial appendage. And now we've kind of outlined all of the cardiomediastinal contours, right atrium, ascending aorta, aortic arch, the arch vessels coming off the aortic arch, the main pulmonary artery, left atrium, and just below the left atrium, we have the left ventricle. On the lateral view, it forms the posterior and inferior cardiac contour. So we can see this location down here. And notice that that contour is below the left atrium and then posterior to the right ventricle. So the only non-contour forming chamber on the frontal view is the right ventricle. The only non-contour forming chamber on the lateral view is the right atrium. Now, what about on CT? So on CT, we're going to first look at the right cardiac chambers. And remember that the right cardiac chambers are anteriorly located and that the heart is only located within the lower chest. And so where are the, um, the right, where's the right chambers located? So if this is the heart and there's four chambers in here, we expect the right heart to be anteriorly located. And the one that's most right lateral, again, creating that right lateral contour, that's gonna be the right atrium. And the one that's most anterior, just behind the sternum, so here's the sternum, just behind the sternum is gonna be the right ventricle. So it's the right atrium and right ventricle. Now, what about the left cardiac chambers? The left cardiac chambers are gonna be located behind each of their respective chambers. So the left atrium is gonna be located just behind the right atrium. So here's the right atrium and here's the left atrium. The left ventricle is the largest chamber and that's gonna be located just behind the right ventricle. And notice the really thick wall of the left ventricle because it pumps blood throughout the entire body. The left atrium is the most posteriorly located chamber. The left ventricle is the largest and most left located chamber in the heart. So if we were to kind of draw out a schematic here, this almost looks like a tombstone that's been tilted over. To draw this out, we have the right atrium and right ventricle located anteriorly, and then the left atrium and left ventricle located posteriorly. Also seen in the lower chest is the esophagus, which is really hard to see here just in front of the descending aorta. We could also see the descending aorta and spine. So what about some key relationships here? Well, we have to know where the relative locations of the tricuspid and mitral valves are. Now, we can't really ask you where they are in the CT. However, if we were to outline a portion of a valve, you should be able to identify it. 
So remember, the tricuspid valve separates the right atrium from right ventricle and is therefore located in the anterior aspects of the heart. So this is the expected location of the tricuspid valve, and here it is on the schematic. The mitral valve separates the left atrium and left ventricle, which should be posteriorly located because the left atrium is the most posteriorly located chamber in the heart. And so here's this location, again, posterior to the tricuspid valve, and here's its relative location on this uh, schematic. And then here's again the relative locations of the valves, the tricuspid and the mitral. Lastly, we have to know the location of the septa. So the septa can be really hard to see on CT. So again, we won't ask you where they are if they're hard to see, but if outline and say which septum is this, you should be able to identify it. And the septum that separates the right atrium from the left atrium, this is the interatrial septa. The septum that separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle, so this area in here, this wall separating the two, this is the interventricular septum. The interventricular septum is actually just a portion of the left ventricle, but we term it the interventricular septum because it separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle. So here's our cardiac CT summary. We have four chambers anteriorly, right atrium and right ventricle, right atrium, most right lateral, right ventricle, most anteriorly located, most posteriorly located left atrium, largest chamber in the heart, left ventricle, Interatrial septa separate the two atria. Interventricular septum separates the two ventricles. And then we can see the relative locations of the tricuspid valve separating the right atrium from the right ventricle. And then the mitral valve separating the left atrium from the left ventricle. This all occurs in the lower chest. So all we expect to see as far as the major vessels go is the descending thoracic aorta. So in summary, there was a substantial amount of overlap that we saw of these structures on chest x-ray. We saw the left brachiocephalic vein meeting up with the right brachiocephalic vein to form the SVC in the mid chest, which then had blood enter into the right atrium. Blood left the right atrium via the tricuspid valve to enter into the right ventricle. The right ventricle is non contour forming. Blood leaves the right ventricle via the pulmonary valve into the main pulmonary artery, which is to the left of midline, just below that aortic arch, to then circulate blood into the lungs via the horizontal right pulmonary artery below the, left, below the right main stem the left pulmonary artery going up and over the left main stem to then re-enter the heart via the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, which is the most posteriorly located chamber in the heart. And remember, you saw that left atrial appendage creating this little contour just below the main pulmonary artery. Blood leaves the left atrium via the mitral valve to enter into the left ventricle, which forms this large cardiac contour. Blood then leaves the aortic uh, left ventricle via the aortic valve, which is the most midline uh, uh, valve in the heart. Turn to the ascending aorta, which goes from right, remember to the right side of the body here, eclipsing that SVC. To enter into the um, aortic arch, which runs anterior to posterior. And then eventually blood will leave into the arch vessels and then descend into the descending thoracic aorta, which is to the left of spine. So there's a substantial amount of overlap. And we can again see the same thing with the cardiac chambers in the lateral view. Blood enters the left atrium. Um, uh, from the pulmonary veins. And we can see the overlap here of the left atrium and the left ventricle, the right atrium sitting um, to the right here. We don't really see a cardiac contour there. And then the right ventricle, which is the most anterior chamber in the heart. And we also saw the aortic arch, which comes off the left ventricle running from anterior to posterior and then superior to inferior in the posterior aspects of the chest. So then the question becomes which structures actually create contours that we can see. So on the frontal view, you should be able to identify all cardiomediastinal contours. The first one that we see is the right atrium. Just above that, we see the ascending aorta. Eclipsed by the ascending aorta is the SVC. The bump that we see over here is formed by a combination of the aortic arch and the last um, arch vessel, which is the left subclavian artery. Below the aortic arch, we have the main pulmonary artery. Remember, just below that, we have the left atrium. And then just below that, we have the left ventricle. On the lateral view, the most anterior cardiac chamber that we see is the right ventricle. The most posterior and superior is the left atrium, and the most posterior inferior is the left ventricle. We can also make out portions of the aortic arch. This is a key slide, and again, we'll outline these con contours for you, so you don't have to identify them, but if outlined, you should be able to identify each of these structures. Now, we also saw the location of four CT levels. We looked in the upper chest, at the level of the aortic arch, in the mid chest, and in the lower chest. You should be able to identify all major structures on each of these slides. In the upper chest, we have the brachiocephalic veins, 
the three aortic arch vessels, we saw the trachea and esophagus. In the upper chest at the level of the aortic arch, we have the aortic arch, which is the left of midline at the level of the brachiocephalic venous confluence, which forms on the right side of the body to create the SVC. In the mid chest, this is kind of a key slide here because we see lots of structures. You have the three great arch vessels, the SVC to the right, the ascending aorta in the middle, and the main pulmonary artery to the left. And in the lower chest, we saw that the, there was four cardiac chambers, the right heart being anterior and the left heart being posterior. So in conclusion, we identified on chest x-ray the expected location of all major cardiovascular structures, and then noted which contours are visible. And you have to know which of those contours um, correspond to which major cardiac cardiomediocentral structures. We also identified on CT the location of these structures and then highlighted key anatomical relationships, which you are responsible for. In the appendix, you will find four key CT images, some ch the chest x-ray cardiomediastinal contours, key anatomical relationships outlined in practice questions, which you could see here. Thank you. If there's any questions, please feel free to email me.